What's up guys and welcome to today's very very important video on clicks but no sales what to do. So you probably know that issue I mean almost every dropshipper almost every e-commerce entrepreneur has been there once um, getting traffic like from Google from Facebook from influencers whatever but they are just not converting like maybe even hundreds and hundreds of clicks without a single sale and in this video I want to help you I want to give you a lot of different um, tips on how to get rid of that what to do if you get no sales like where can you uh, attack like what is what is it that you can change so that you finally make those sales or make more sales and um, I want to show you now what we will cover in this video here today so we talk about three different layers of this problem at the very top we have the product so if there is certain issue uh, if there are certain issues with your product I will cover them in here then we will talk about your store and landing page like if you use landing pages or stores uh, it doesn't really matter here but some typical um, issues with that and we will cover traffic and ads so we have three different layers i talk about all of them and now i really hope that you play uh, pay close attention because i will give you a lot of different reasons why you're not selling so first of all let's look at the traffic and ads category and here the first thing that you should do that very few people actually do successfully is pre-selling your visitors so what does this mean first of all you need strong ad copywriting that puts visitors in buying mode so i see this all the time with facebook ads for example people have very simple ads without really uh, you know paying attention to the copy that might actually pre-sell your product already so you have to think about it like this facebook of course you know the, the main goal of the traffic source is to bring people to your site and then the store has to convert but the point is if you manage to pre-sell and pre-qualify those visitors before they even click to your site they are kind of like fired up to to learn more about your product and and potentially also buy it so if you on facebook you know write a little story of how your product can help them or why it's so great you know you can talk about their their fears or they or their um you know their needs whether it's positive or negative and that way you can really fire people up to learn more and to finally buy it and when they go to your store um, they go there with a totally different mindset and they are way more receptive to your product than if you just say click here to buy right this doesn't really mean anything so also long form copy tends to be better than short form copy now short form copy sometimes gets like better click through rates uh, because you know people can quickly consume it and they can click immediately but long form copy usually has higher conversion rates so your click through rate might be a little lower because people have to pay more attention and those that have a very short attention span which essentially uh, is true for everyone but those who really go through it and then click um they tend to convert better because you better pre-qualified them and made sure that they like your product now this is especially true for facebook ads but also for google search ads for example you can um, put some good copywriting in those three uh in the in this three description so in the description of your search ad even though of course you you don't have that much room to play as on facebook also the traffic quality is extremely important so there are buying intent traffic sources like google search and shopping and these are definitely worth testing now if you want a super in-depth um super in-depth training on google search and shopping make sure that you check the description for my ecom ppc academy training on how to master that so this is extremely important because if you only use facebook and your pro your product is one that probably requires a certain amount of of pre qualification and buying intent that goes beyond this what I just mentioned with the ad copy. Um, it is extremely important that you try buying intent traffic sources, especially Google Shopping, because there people can you know they look for your product actively, they can see your prices, they can see your Im product images, and they are much more likely to convert than if you just send them a Facebook ad. Another very important point is that you cannot be misleading. So if you, uh, many people think that, you know, the goal of the ad, like I just said, is to get people to your website. And this is true. But the point is, if you get them to your website without being like transparent and honest about what you do, you may get those clicks and you may you may get them pretty cheap and at a high click through rate but if you know if you're misleading with what you have to offer on your site all those clicks will not convert so i've just recently uh, I've, I've recently seen that with uh, someone who was launching like a free plus shipping offer 
And I know this is an extreme example, but he just said, you know, get our free product right here. And people were clicking like crazy, right? So the click-through rate was extremely high, a uh, ton of likes on this on this ad. But the point is, it was a free plus shipping offer and shipping was like $7.95. So if you think something is free, but then you have to pay $8 shipping and it was not like a big product where people would understand that shipping, you know, is that expensive. Of course, it is misleading. And if you wonder why you're not converting, even though you're get a ton of clicks and a high click through rate this might be the reason no misleading being misleading comes in all shapes and sizes whether you lie about the price or whether you're not transparent about the price uh, whether you kind of exaggerate your product benefits way too much and when they go to your landing page they see um, they see what's really going on or your product image looks totally different in your ad than in your actual store these are all ways you can be misleading and reduce the traffic quality which is of course extremely important um, if you use Google, you have to heavily assess search terms. So there are all kinds of search terms that you will realize come in to find your um, to find your products and your, your business. And if you don't check them, especially in the beginning on a daily basis, you may trigger a whole lot of wrong or, or, or not really fitting uh, searches where people might still click your ad, but you may realize that by looking at the search terms, they were not relevant at all. So people might click because they think you're relevant, but because you know their search term, you know better and you know that they're not relevant. So make sure to check the search terms on a daily basis to make sure that you only trigger those that are extremely helpful and fruitful for your business. And on Facebook, try income indicating targeting. So besides all the things that we mentioned about Facebook, try to indicate people's income you know especially if you sell um higher ticket products make sure that you try uh one audience where you also indicate some sort of higher income class like whether you do this with higher income zip codes or some other uh targeting options where you can somewhat indicate the the income of those people this is very important because this will help you um you know try whether whether a better or a richer audience in a way is actually converting now the second category is store and product pages or store and landing page actually. And the first thing here is the technical, technical stuff, right? So first thing that I see all the time, immediate pop-ups. Like this is so much of a turnoff. If people go to your site and they see a pop-up after one second saying, hey, sign up for our newsletter, right? Who, who on earth wants to sign up for your newsletter if they don't even know your business, if they just spent like three seconds on your site? No one wants to do that, like really no one. And even if you get like one sign up in like 100 people or 200 people, this doesn't matter because for all the rest, you uh, just gave a terrible pro um, buying experience. So get rid of them. Also, slow loading time, absolute no-go. I think I don't have to mention, uh, talk more about that. Very simple, the, the longer your website loads, the more people you will lose, but they still count as clicks that you have to pay for. Also, bad navigation and usability is an extra, extremely uh, extremely bad way of losing people. Let's say they go to your site, but they cannot really find what's going on, and especially if you don't send them to the product page directly, um, and they don't know like how to really navigate, and especially if you are not optimized for mobile, this can be a, a huge problem but also an ad destination mismatch. So what we just talked about um, in the, you know, be upfront and be transparent, similar here, if you show them like a picture that looks different than what they see on your site, or if they use a totally different color scheme, like the ad was totally like blue, dark blue, black, uh, very, um, uh, very serious. And then they go to your site and it's all super colorful and it's all like very, uh, yeah, you know, light yellow, etc. This kind of feels strange. And even though it's not like, super super important it may s still like turn off people that clicked on your ad because they were they 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 um in, they liked how your design was and how you presented yourself but then they go to your site that looks totally different this may be a reason why they j then just drop off but also low quality images and videos are extremely important i see a lot of dropshipping stores and they have super pixelated images and i i i'm like why on earth do you have those images? There are millions of Im images out there. You can literally shoot your own photos and you are using ones that have, where you can really count the pixels, right? Uh, this is absolute no-go, especially nowadays where almost everyone has a somewhat decent internet connection where people are used to watching videos in high definition, etc. If you come along with low quality videos and images, they immediately think that you are not really a very, uh, very serious business, right? 
Then it comes to psychology and here we have a typical lack of trust and trust does not mean you have those stupid badges, right? Nobody cares if you have a, you know, 250 or 128 bit uh, encryption or SSL or all these, all these things. People by now are super used to buying online and if you think that having those badges is, is like, um, you know, a USP of your business, that's definitely not the case. So. I don't care about badges, but you have to gain trust by having a very clean design by, for example, uh, showing uh, what I really like to do is w when you have a product that has appeared on other like magazines and websites, you can list them just below your uh, just below your product and people see, oh, you know, you can say the product was seen here and it doesn't have to be your own product. But if just that type of product has been seen on those uh, magazines, for example, this can actually be helpful. So lack of trust because they don't believe you're an actual real business. Also, things like uh, a phone number, email address right on the page may help. Then there may not be a real trigger. And with trigger, I mean something like fear of missing out. So or scarcity or irresistible offer. Now, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean you should put a count on timer everywhere now. But people need some sort of trigger to buy right now, especially when you, you know, when you try to sell them on Facebook, where they are actually most of the time, not really uh, looking to buy and where they where you just came along and said, Hey, this is a great product, want to buy it, they normally need some more reason to do so. So an irresistible offer might be uh, you're literally giving them like 90% off or 80% off. So you, you say something like previously $100, now it's just 20 and you get this on top and this on top. This is an irresistible offer where most people um, might probably buy even though they never plan to do so. So an irresistible offer is very powerful. Also scarcity, if applied the right way, like if you really have a limited time discount or if you say something like price uh, will increase or, uh, you know, here's a limited count discount coupon for the next 12 hours or here is for the next six hours you get free shipping. The point is don't exaggerate this. Like don't say something like in 20 minutes this product will be gone or right now there are 30,000 people watching. I see this all the time. That's just stupid. So you have to find the thin line between still being effective but not being like too crazy here with your numbers and the things that you claim. Also, social proof is extremely important. If you can, of course, uh, testimonials are extremely valuable, but also if you have a social media page, like embed your Instagram gallery in your product page where you where, where people can see your products, maybe also other customers that posted a picture of your product on Instagram, pu put them all in the gallery on your product page so that people see that actual people are also buying your product. And the thing is, the more info you have about a customer, the better. So if you have customer videos, that's perfect. If you have like Instagram pictures of people using your products, that's also perfect. If you only have like written text description, uh, text reviews, it's better than nothing, but it's definitely less valuable than if you have social proof by customers who really seem to be, yeah, like real and legit. Now let's talk about product issues. So we talked about landing pages, we talked about the ad level, but now also the product can have some issues and this might be a very strong reason why people don't end up converting. So first of all, pricing. Um, if you charge a price, mo most, or let me put it like this, most dropshippers don't have um, the real pricing strategy. So they just have random price because they pay $10 for an item, so they just charge like 30. And often this works well, but probably you don't realize that your price is like totally outrageous in your market. And um, if you have it that way and people people that are familiar with the market, they know it, they will never buy your item, right? So if the average product price is like 20 bucks and you charge 40 without being some sort, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> some sort of luxury brand or advanced brand, they will never buy your product. Also, bad images can be a huge problem. If you if you don't really showcase your product in a good way with high definition images, different angles, etc., people may not buy because they um, just, especially if it gets in the more expensive range, they want to make sure that the product is right for them and that they've seen it in advance in, you know, how it looks like in a normal environment, like in your uh, living room, if it's an accessory item or something. So if you have bad images that don't represent the product very well, um, this is definitely a no-go because people cannot expect what they will get from this product. Also, if you don't have enough info, like enough um, stuff in your description, telling people what the product is about. So it should always be a mix of selling 
uh, like sales copy and features and benefits. So have all of that in your description so that people know exactly like the material of an item, the size and the, the weight, depending on what item it is, if this is relevant or not, but also then include some benefits and some sales copy. Then a lack of explanation can be very, uh, a very bad thing if you have a product that requires some sort of explanation. So there are products, especially like if it comes to toys or gadgets or, or things like that, that need some sort of explanation, especially if these products are very, very new and unique. So if you have a product that is that falls into that category and you have no video at all, people might sit there like, what the hell is going on with that product? Like, what is it? Why is this so special? And if you don't have a video for these type of products, this will definitely hurt your conversions. Whereas if you have a product of someone wearing your necklace or something, this is totally irrelevant. So people don't need a video for that. Then, very common product. It, it, an issue might be that you sell a very common product that people can buy every, anywhere else. So if you have something that can easily be checked on Amazon and they can buy it right away, of course it may still work but it's definitely more difficult because if you sell something that is super uh you know replaceable like a phone cable or a charger or something like that uh or a very simple phone case people might just say well, why should i buy it here for like 20 bucks waiting 30 days if i can just go to amazon or ebay and pay 20 percent of that or, or half the price and get it immediately now of course this is not always true sometimes people are just if you do a very good job with your marketing etc people will just buy right away but the point is you should always aim for products that are a little unique that are a little special whether it's in their design in their um i don't know material or how you how you presented them some there has to be some reason for people to buy it from your store whether it is because they cannot find it elsewhere like within 30, uh, 30 seconds of googling or something like that but the point is do your best to have something somewhat unique in your store that cannot easily be found on amazon in like 10 seconds so this being said guys now i want to give you some final notes like some final tips for you to to implement to reduce your um, or to increase your uh, conversions and reduce the amount of people that are just leaving First of all, very simple, use Google Analytics. So many people don't use it and they don't, and they, the only analytics they have is from Shopify or from their Facebook ads dashboard. But if you use analytics, you can learn more about behavior, which pages your people are visiting, how much time they spend on them. Uh, you know, you can define goals and check funnels, how many people drop off from an add to cart after they came specifically from Facebook and how Facebook converts compared to Google on the add to cart level, etc., etc. So many useful tips, but also a hot jar where you can basically watch what your uh, visitors are doing on your site. So if you use hot jar, you can view recordings of your visitors, how they browse your site. And you may probably um, become aware of certain issues. So when I used hot jar for the first time in the store, I realized that there was a video on one specific product page that was not working and people all were clicking that but it didn't work and many of them were leaving afterwards because it was one of those um, products that required a lot of explanation and this is just one of the many uh, ways hotjar can help you if you're not aware of an of a mistake of an error in your uh, store or something that massively causes people to drop hotjar can be your best friend to indicate why people are leaving also try a customer survey tool if you have hundreds of clicks and it, nothing really helps i'm not a, normally not a big fan of those tools but if nothing if literally no one converts or your conversion rate is absolutely terrible try one of those little pop-ups that come up after some time like 30 seconds or, or so or accident hand and ask them what what is it that they uh, that causes them not to to buy or what do you what they think could be improved and then you can give multiple choice options like uh, I'm too confused or price is too high or I don't like the product or whatever it is. And even though these, these uh, responses are not always that representative because for example, many people might say that the price is too high. But the point is, if you use these, at least you will have some sort of idea why something is not working. So you shouldn't use them immediately in my opinion, but once you really get a lot of clicks and they don't convert well, it might be something worth trying. There are a lot of apps that do that. Also, run a limited test with super low prices. Um, if you, you know, if you cannot convert your product at fifty dollars, 
check whether the price is actually an issue and test it at like $20. And if they still don't convert, it's because the product is bad, because your traffic is bad, but then you know that it's not a pricing issue. So of course your, your profits will be lower, but at least you know that people are still interested in the product. Actually, a partner of mine and, and myself were concurrently building a really cool price split testing app for Shopify because all the current ones do not really do a very great, great job in my opinion. So stay tuned about that one because I will announce something here very soon as well. And then test normal product versus uh, normal product pages versus landing pages. So if you only use a normal Shopify store so far, see how it com uh, converts, you know, against the ClickFunnels page or a PageFly page or a Zipify page. Probably um, it works better for your business. Probably it's better to show them the, all the content in a structured way, have multiple add to cart buttons. And this way, you know, sometimes landing pages can convert like two times or three times higher uh, than a normal product page, but not always. So the point is none of them is better or, or, you know, product pages are not better or worse than landing pages. It always depends. So if you're not very successful, make sure to try this out. Probably you have more luck with a custom landing page. So yeah, guys, these were all my tips about how to um, get rid of people that are just not converting or how to increase your conversion rates. I hope that this was helpful for you. I think there are a lot of tips on all kinds of stages in your business. So I believe if you apply at least like some of them, you can already improve your business and get more sales. So if you enjoyed this video, I want to see more like this in the future and make sure that you never uh, miss any of those valuable videos. Make sure to subscribe and also like if you enjoyed this, it would be very, very uh, great for me if you do that. Also comment below whether you applied any of those tips before or whether you tried them and they didn't work or just your opinion on these tips would be great to know what you think about them so that I know for also future videos. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. As I said in the mid of this video, if you want to become a Google Ads Pro because we, we uh, mentioned Google Ads several times though, make sure to check the description for my training. But else, I really thank you for watching. Hope it was valuable and I will hopefully See you in the next video, guys, and bye-bye.